Good morning and welcome to worship with St. Martin's United Church. We want to extend a special welcome to the members of Knox United in Langham and to folks at Park Ridge Centre who are joining us this morning. We're so glad to share in this time of worship together with you. My name is Jordan Cantwell, and I'm here with our worship team, Ken Glover on sound, Bob Anderson on camera, Kathy Anderson on projection and editing, and Aaron Temple on piano. My ministry colleague, Keith Hall, is on medical leave at this time, so we pray for his speedy recovery. A big thank you to Josie for lighting the Christ candle, to Kit for reading scripture, and to all who contributed announcements. Let's turn to those announcements now. Today is Communion Sunday, so we invite you to make sure you've got some bread and juice or wine with you for this service. If you don't already have those available, then you can pause the video now and go and get them. Good morning. This is Pat Turner from the Outreach Committee. We hope you can join us on the 21st of February at 2.30 in the afternoon. We will have a Zoom meeting with Reverend Keith Simmons from Duncan, B.C. Reverend Simmons works as an ecumenical accompanier through the World Council on Churches. He has worked with people in Palestine at their work and in their schools. He has a lot. He has spent quite a bit of time with the people that have supplied our Zatoon products. He will be giving us some of his, his insights into his work in Palestine. We hope you can join us at this Zoom meeting. If you're unable to join us at this particular time, he does have a couple of YouTube videos that you might be interested in listening to. Uh, we do hope you can join us 21st of February, 2.30 in the afternoon. Hope to see you there. Bye for now. Hi. Do you miss chatting with people after church in the lounge? Then join us on Zoom for the next best thing. The community check-in happens at noon on Sundays, and you can find the link for it in the church chat. Hope to see you there. Good morning. Usually the first Sunday of the month, we have the opportunity to make a donation to the food bank for a, retiring, for a retiring offering. This is not as simple as it used to be. However, you can write a check or make an e-transfer indicating the funds are for the retiring offering to uh, St. Martin's United Church. Or you could just put aside a donation each month until the end of the year. Outreach is always very appreciative of those your generosity for those in need. So let's keep our generosity up for the food bank at this particular time because they're having a very trying circumstances with the COVID outbreak and many, many more baskets to be, full, be filled. Thanks very much. Hi folks, this is just a, a reminder about the weekly Bible study that has already begun. It's every Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m. on Zoom, and you can register for that by going to our website, www.stmartinsuc.com, and scroll down to the bottom of the home page, click on the little icon on the right-hand side that says Bible study, and all the information is in there. You, there's a link that you can click on to register, and after you register, you will be sent the Zoom link to participate in the Bible study. And this is open to absolutely anyone and everyone, uh, clergy, lay, from all across Saskatchewan and beyond. So hope to see many of you there in the future. Our copies of Faith on the Move, the Lenten devotional book, have arrived. So if you ordered a copy, then please contact Jordan to arrange for pickup or delivery. If you didn't order a copy, but now you're thinking you'd like one, the United Church Resource Distribution Center is actually now making an ebook version available. So you can go to ucrdstore.ca and order your copy today. Good morning. Join us live on Zoom for our Ash Wednesday service on February 17th at 7 p.m. Please have the following materials with you, if possible. 
a small dish of water, a candle, a piece of yarn about six inches long, or a medium-sized rubber band. See the Church Chat website, Facebook, or our Instagram for details on how to connect to the Zoom meeting for this service. Throughout the service today, I invite you to join in saying the words printed in yellow type that appear on your screen. So we begin by acknowledging the land and the territory on which we worship. Our territorial acknowledgement is an expression of gratitude and appreciation to those whose territory we live and worship on. We honor the Indigenous people who have been living and working on this land from time immemorial. We are mindful of our history and our responsibilities as treaty people as we seek to live together in a good way. So in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge our relationship with the Indigenous peoples of this land. We acknowledge that we are gathering for worship on the traditional lands of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people, bound by the understandings made in the agreement known as Treaty 6. We begin our worship service by lighting the Christ candle. Josie will lead us in our candle lighting, and we invite each of you to light a candle where you are. From this Christ light, we light our affirming candle, which illumines our commitment to be a community of safety and belonging for all God's people. May this light enliven our community to becoming an anti-racist community of faith. We also light our peace candle as we pray for peace with justice for all. Please join me in our responsive call to worship. God is our refuge and home. God is our strength and center. God is a very present help. God has always been and always will be our very present help. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth has changed, though the world has changed, though our lives have been shaped by history out of our control, and by present realities that threaten us. There is a river whose streams make glad the diaspora of God. God is in her midst. They shall not be moved. God will be present to help wherever morning dawns.
February is Black History Month in Canada. It's a time to honor and celebrate the many contributions of black people to Canadian society. It's a time to remember African Canadian history, the struggles and the haunting legacy of the transatlantic slave trade. Black history is Canadian history, and this is perhaps the perfect time to introduce everyone to a part of the United Church's history that few people may know about. That is the history of black peoples in the United Church. Black people have been part of the congregations that formed the United Church of Canada for more than 100 years. African Canadians were actively involved in churches across the country. In Toronto, for example, Wilbur Howard was ordained in 1974. He was elected as the first and to date the only black moderator of the United Church. Many other black people have offered leadership in the church over time. But even today in the United Church, a church that is committed to racial justice, many black people and black leaders still struggle with feelings of isolation, alienation, and racism. I come from Scarborough, and Scarborough is one of the most diverse places in Canada. And if you look at the United Churches within Scarborough, they're mainly white. And it's, it's fascinating to me how a community could look so different from the community that they live in. And there's a reason for that, because people aren't feeling comfortable, people don't feel welcome, people don't see themselves represented, people, people coming in don't all, don't, all, don't all feel called to educate others, and, and they just want to be and have a spiritual place where they can call their home. Since 2005, a new group of black people started meeting. Part of this group's focus is about making changes in the United Church. The group is called The Journeys of Black Peoples in the United Church of Canada. But we still have a long way to go as we move into the future. For a church that is striving to become more intercultural, Black History Month provides a unique opportunity to learn more about the lives and legacies of people of African descent. I think it's an ongoing journey um, of making sure that we feel at home because we all come from different cultures and different backgrounds and different understanding of, you know, our different church beliefs. February could also be a time for congregations to make an intentional commitment to becoming more culturally sensitive, justice conscious, and racially inclusive. How will you celebrate Black History Month? Friends, let us pray. Today in our worship, we recognize people of African descent and lament anti-black racism and violence. We pray that the spirit will reorient us, challenging, challenging us, us to, to live, live by grace, grace rather, rather than, than entitlement, entitlement. Expecting, expecting us, us to, to be, be a blessing, blessing to, to the earth. earth. We pray that by acknowledging our brokenness, we will be closer to becoming a church where the good news is lived out, faith, faith nurtured and hearts comforted, comforted. gifts shared, shared for the good of all, resistance, resistance to the forces that exploit and marginalize, and marginalize. Fierce, fierce love in the face of violence, human, human dignity defended, members, members of a community held and inspired by God. Through our tears and silent confessions, may we witness to your love and grace. God is our refuge and home. God is our strength and center. God, God is a is very present, present help. help. God has God always, always been, been and always, always will be our very, very present, present help. help. Sometimes I
A reading from Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came up and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out demons and would not let them speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to the deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, and when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring town, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for this is what I have come to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is testimony from our ancestors in faith. Thanks be to God. Friends, please pray with me. Holy One, may you be in the words of my mouth and in the meditations of all of our hearts, this day and always. Amen. In the events just prior to the story that we heard today, Jesus begins his public ministry by casting an unclean spirit out of a person to the astonishment of all who see it. Now, I wonder, what comes to mind for you when you hear the term unclean spirit? The Gospels seem to use this term synonymously with demon possession, which we hear a lot about in today's passage. But what does that mean? Well, some contemporary biblical interpreters suggest that in the first century, physical and mental illnesses, especially the ones that people didn't understand, were attributed to malignant spirits that took control of a person. Now today we have a different understanding of physical and mental health, and so we interpret casting out demons and unclean spirits as healing people from physical or mental illnesses. But I wonder, in Jewish tradition, a thing that is unclean is not malignant or demonic or even broken. It's something that is considered to be ritually impure. That means that it's not able to be in close proximity to God. So some kinds of animals were considered to be unclean, like pigs, which meant that you couldn't use them for sacrifices to God and you shouldn't eat them. But anyone could become temporarily unclean through contact with something or someone that was considered to be unclean. And if that happened, the person would have to go through a purification ritual before they could approach God again. To be clean was to be able to get close to God. To be unclean was to experience an enforced separation from God. And this separation from God also translated into separation from community because people didn't want to risk becoming unclean themselves by being in close contact with someone who was deemed to be unclean. So now let's return to this notion of an unclean spirit. Rather than suggesting something malignant or defective, perhaps these demons refer to that which causes our spirit to feel cut off from God and from others. Have you ever felt that way? unable to get close to God, or an, an outsider in your own community. Now, there are lots of things that can cause us to feel this way. Experiences of rejection and humiliation, encounters with prejudice and discrimination, feelings of shame and unworthiness, self-doubt, a wounded heart, loss, grief, 
Mark's gospel tells us that the first act of Jesus' public ministry is to liberate someone from this state of disconnection, restoring them to communion with God and with their neighbors. And on the evening of that same day, he goes to Simon's house and finds his friend's mother-in-law laid up with a fever. We don't know what's causing her fever. Probably Jesus didn't either. Quite possibly it's something that renders her ritually unclean. So notice what Jesus does. He comes near to her. He takes hold of her. Lifts her up. The Greek verb that's used here to raise or lift up, egero, is the same verb Mark uses of Jesus at the resurrection. He has been raised. He's not here. And notice what she does. She begins to serve them. Now, I always figured that this meant she starts preparing supper for them. And I was annoyed that this woman, who only moments ago was sick in bed, is now expected to wait hand and foot on her son-in-law and his friends. But the verb here is diakoneo. It means to minister. It's the root word from which we get diaconal and deacon, one who offers a ministry of service, one who provides for the community. This woman, whom Mark doesn't even name, is liberated by Jesus from what holds her down and is raised up for ministry in the budding Jesus movement. She is the first deacon of the church. As we are all too aware these days, illness not only debilitates the body, it can also cut a person off from their social life and contributions to community. And this can feel like a loss of dignity or purpose. If we take Simon's mother-in-law seriously as the first deacon, we can see that her recovery is connected to a restoration of dignity and purpose. Hospitality was highly prized in the ancient world, and for early Christians to be hospitable in a way that advanced the Jesus movement was a great honor. The healing in this story is not only a matter of a fever departing, it's also a matter of a return to community and self-respect and of participation in the movement. Healing in the Gospels always has a social dimension. Healing takes place when people are restored to right relationship with themselves, their neighbors, and with God. In Mark's Gospel, right from day one, Jesus is revealed as the Holy One of God who comes to confront death-dealing forces for the sake of life-giving restoration. The one who will be resurrected himself is all about resurrection here and now. He comes to lift us up into service, to reawaken us into dignity, community, and genuine health. He does this not so much by his words as by his actions. He liberates those who are isolated by connecting with them, removing people's stigma by taking it on himself, touching those labeled untouchable, loving those presumed unlovable. And he restores people to community by being in community with them. He frees people for service in and to the community by recognizing and honoring their gifts and their value. Following Jesus means having the courage to confront the forces of ruin. It means finding ways, even in an age of pandemic and physical distancing, to tenderly bind up wounds. It means not only proclaiming resurrection, but living lives of resurrection for ourselves and for others. And it means doing all of this with our actions as much as with our words. My friend Janet told me this story. She was attending an event with her young granddaughter who saw another child in a stroller and noticed that all of the other children were being told to avoid him. 
Janet's granddaughter goes over to this boy and sees that he's covered in eczema and has a sore on his wrist and the sore is bleeding. She says to him, I know how you can get better. And she takes his hand and she leads him over to Janet. She shows the boy a scrape on her own finger that is healed and says, Grandma's kisses made it better. Then she asks Janet to kiss the young boy. And she does. Then the girl says to the young boy, See, now you will get better. She does it with love. Then the two children walk back over to the boy's mom who is smiling, having watched this whole thing unfold. And within a few minutes, all the other kids come over and they all start playing together. Jesus comes as healer and liberator, calling us to join him and he promises to accompany us along the way, caring for us as we confront, come near, take hold, lift up, and serve. May we meet the challenge of this hour with courage, tenderness, and love.
Trust in God, we are called to be the church. To celebrate God's presence. 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 To live with respect in creation. Pour vivre avec respect. Dans la création. To love and serve others. To seek justice and resist evil. To proclaim Jesus crucified and risen. Our judge and our hope. <laughs> in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. is God's table, a fellowship that endures history and the trials of our past, present, and future with an invitation that rings out through communities and creation, calling you to come as you are. Come because you are beloved and invited, whether you know it or not, feel it or not. Come and be fed. Come and find healing. Come and be renewed for the journey ahead. Come and know that God invites sinner and saint, oppressor and oppressed, 
colonizer and colonized, indigenous and displaced, the corporate CEO and the migrant farmer, the bold and courageous, and the fearful and complacent. For we are one humanity, all children of our creator, all in need of forgiveness and bread. God be with you. And, and, and also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Mm -hmm. Lift them up, up to, to God. God. Let us give thanks to God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give God, God thanks and, and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you praise, God, for your beauty, goodness, creating power, and providential care in making the world, establishing the covenant, teaching us how to care for one another and creation, speaking truth through the prophets, showing mercy in spite of our violence, our selfishness, and our systems of oppression, and giving us the love of God in the gift of Jesus Christ. With thanksgiving and faith, we remember Jesus, born into our world, breathing our air, celebrating our humanity, building community with all people of all ages, the despised, the popular, the powerful and meek, mourning our losses, dying in our state-sanctioned violence, faithful to everything God laid before him, and steadfast in his redeeming love for us. In resurrection, he showed us that death and all that leads to death can be overcome by this life and love. On the night before he died, he gathered a table with his friends, and he took a loaf of bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. Then after supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for all. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Remembering God's gracious gift to us, let us offer ourselves to God in prayer. Living, Living incarnate, incarnate God, God together, together with this, this bread, bread and this, and this cup, cup, we humbly, humbly offer, offer to you ourselves, ourselves our, our brokenness, brokenness and our, our hope. Right. By the By power of your grace, your grace may, may we become a living testimony to your reconciling love. love. Holy Spirit, draw us into communion with Christ and with one another. Nourish us in Christ's body and in the beloved community you are making. Keep us faithful in ministry and hasten the coming of the reign of God with justice and beauty. Friends, let us continue praying. Compassionate God, hear us as we pray for your church and its varied ministries. For the work of justice and the healing of creation. For the care of strangers, neighbors, family, friends. And for those isolated by sickness, sorrow, violence, or fear. For those broken by the world. For those who face death. For those who accompany the sick and the dying. And for all who have asked for the prayers of this community, we hold each of them in prayerful intention as their names are read. Betty Lou, Mary, Diane, Troy, Lorna, Aaron, Peggy, Marguerite, Keith, Gord, Jane and family, Leanne and family, Lillian, Eunice, Lorna, Roy and Janet, and the family and friends of Mercine, Velma Roberts, Kay Nicklin, Bob Simpson, and all whom we name now in the silence of our hearts.
Generous and compassionate God, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. Give us grace and wisdom to accept hard truths. Grant us courage and faith to embody your love, justice, and healing presence for others. Amen. Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 When we share this bread, we remember that Jesus was strongest and most powerful in his weakest and most vulnerable moments. This broken loaf is the bread of life. When we fill this cup, we remember the common cup and the abundant blessings that have been entrusted to us. This is the cup of blessing. Friends, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please join me in prayer. Christ, you have gathered us at your table to bear witness to our unity in you. Fed and nourished, may we leave from here ready to be peacekeepers, God bearers, and kingdom builders. Amen.
there is a saying, one who experiences something good must share it. We who have received, felt, tasted, and experienced the good news must share it. Go then into the world to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in your words, actions, and deeds.